Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Spend Less Craft More video. Today I'm going to be creating my own set of birthday candle layering stencils. And I'm doing that because I recently saw some for sale and I thought they'd be really great for making one layer cards that are easy to send through the post but that have a lot of pattern and colour and visual texture. But I didn't want to shell out for another set of stencils when I've already got lots of stencils and I've got candle dies. So I'm going to use my candle dies and my stencils to kind of recreate the look. If you haven't got any candle dies but you want to do this, stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you another way of creating your candle stencil. So my card blank is 5 by 7 inches, smooth white cardstock, which is great for blending on. And I've got another piece of paper here, it's a bit thinner and this is going to be what I make my stencil from. You could use masking paper or a bit of card or a bit of packaging, whatever you've got. And on here, I just want to draw around my card blank, just so I know what I'm looking at. Of course you could always make your stencils through something see-through, which would be ideal really, but I haven't got anything to hand right now, so I'm using paper. And what I'm going to do is arrange my candles in a jaunty design. I'm going to try and keep this clean and simple, so I do want some white space here on my card, but you could, if you wanted, fill the whole card with candles, so get as many as you can on. I'm going to secure this with a sticky note and run it through my cattle bag. So the stencil is cut. What I'm going to do now, and this is just because my stencil isn't see-through, I'm going to fold and snip along these lines here. like this. This will all make sense in a minute. And slot my card in, butt it up against there. And now my birthday candles are in the right place. Actually I think they might be a bit low so I'm going to adjust this here and fold it up a little bit lower down. I think that's better. They're a little bit higher up now in the right place. So there are my candles ready for stenciling. So what I want to do first is mask off the flames. I don't want to colour those in the first round. I'm going to save that for later. And then I'm going to mask off those two candles there so I can work on this one and I'm going to colour this with salt water tapping and just blend a nice layer of salt water taffy through my stencil like so. Next I'm going to mask off this candle and this candle and I'm going to colour this one with dried marigold. And now I'm going to mask off the middle one. So I've got one left. And I'm going to colour that with salvage patina. So now what I want to do is add some pattern to my candles. Now if you've got dies like this with pattern in them, you can reinsert your die, cut, not die, mask off your other candles again. So we can pop that in there and take a darker colour. So I'm going to go for spiced marmalade over my dried marigold and carefully go over it. It's a bit fiddly, but if you're careful, you can do it. And when you take that off, you will have pattern on your candle. But if you don't have 
die cuts with patterns in them, you can just use a regular stencil. For my green candle, I'm going to add some spots. And I've got this piece of sequin remnants, which I use as a stencil. So I can put that over the top, get some peacock feathers, which is a darker form of salvage patina, and blend over it like that. And then I get my spotty pattern on my candle. And to my saltwater taffy candle, I'm going to add some hearts. I think I'll do them at an angle like this so that you get lots of hearts on. And for this, I'm going to use warm lipstick, which will show up over saltwater taffy. So that's the body of the candles done. Now for the flames. I'm going to take my sticky notes, my masks, and mask off up here, right up to the bottom of the flame. So all that's exposed is the flame area. And for this, I'm going to use scattered straw to colour the whole of the flame and then I've got a finger dauber with spice marmalade that's what's on it spice marmalade and I'm just gonna add a little bit to the bottom of each flame and take a black pen and connect the flame to the candle in the gap and there we have three beautiful coloured bouncy candles with some pattern and texture on. I think I did go over the edge slightly with the hearts, but that's okay. In fact, you could do that for a little bit of, uh, what should we call it, whimsy. When you do your pattern layer, you could shift down or up shift your stencil slightly so the pattern goes off the candle and that would add a little bit of extra interest and energy I think. So I'm going to add my sentiment in black directly on top of my candles to keep everything in this corner. So this is birthday wishes which is appropriate for a candle card I think. So there we have a clean and simple birthday wishes card made with a stencil created with dies and stencils I've already got in my stash. So no need to go out and buy another stencil set. But what if you haven't got any candle dies? Well, it's a very simple shape, so you could make your own. Draw out whatever shape you wanted. It doesn't have to be neat or tidy, just an approximate size and shape. And then take a craft knife and again doesn't have to be perfect you can just cut it out like that if you're feeling confident you don't even have to draw the shape you could just take a craft knife and make your candle shape like that I think this would create a really whimsical look, which is a lot of fun. What about the flame shape? Well, again, if you wanted, you could draw it and you could cut it. Might be a bit ragged, but that's okay. could always go in with a pair of detail scissors that aren't gummed up with foam tape and tidy up some of the curves. Use your best fussy cutting skills. In the past, I've used leaf dies that are similarly shaped to flames and you could use those to cut out your flame shape if you've got something like that. 
If you don't like using a craft knife, you can just use scissors. So you can cut into your mask like that and then take a bit of sticky note and stick it across the bottom of the top to create your candle shape. That is really simple to do and you do get nice straight sides with a pair of scissors. You don't have to have your flame on top of your mask. You could cut a flame out of, let's go, a, another piece of paper or a bit of packaging or something. You could cut the shape like that. And once you've stenciled your candle, you can put your flame where you want it and then ink like that. So you could do it on two separate masks. If you don't want to do any cutting at all, then let's flip this over and use the other side. Just take one, two, three, four sticky notes. You can do one candle at a time. You can create your candle. Just try and find the sticky edge with sticky notes. and there you go, there is a candle shape. So if you haven't got dies, you can use a craft knife, you can use scissors, you could use other dies like a flame, a leaf die that could double up as a flame, or you could just go for that with your sticky notes. I will leave a link to these particular sticky notes in the video description because I always get asked about them. They are sticky over 80% of their back. So this whole area here is sticky and this area isn't. So it's like a reverse normal sticky note, but they're really, really useful. And I buy them in bulk because as I say, they're really, really useful. So there we have another Spend Less, Craft More video. I do hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with things you've already got in your own stash. If you've got another way of creating candle masks then do let us know in the comments because it's great to have as many ideas as possible for doing something like this or anything really right thanks for watching and i'll see you back here very soon bye for now